Hey guys, one of our patrons on Patreon sent us a link to an article that had been released this week about some bureaucrats in Tokyo, some young bureaucrats in Tokyo, a group of about 30 of them who'd been doing studies for the last 12 months about various society related things and in particular the fact that Japanese society tends to focus on the younger people supporting the older people, the greying people, the silver people as they call them, the people that are, that are getting older and retiring and stopping work and the younger people focusing on, on supporting those older people. And the conclusion that these young bureaucrats came to after all their studies and, and looking into it was that Japan should be focusing more on children and young people and education. And it was released and the story, the story said that there was some people who admired these young people for being brave enough to, to sort of speak out and there was other people who said that as young, as young bureaucrats they shouldn't be getting involved in making comments about uh, societal issues. So it's often the case, you know, in a lot of countries when young people or young educated people come up, you know, do studies and come up with, with conclusions, you know, obviously it's natural that those conclusions be released and be discussed. And that's, a, that's obviously a healthy thing for society. However, in Japan, it sort of rocks the boat. And so we see a lot of this. We do see a lot of this. People people studying different topics about Japan or different aspects about Japanese society and coming to conclusions and then releasing the conclusions and then nothing happens and you guys that have seen a lot of our videos and particularly some of the how-to videos heads up videos that talk about Japanese society will recognize lots of these points that are about to to come up again because they overlap with a lot of other things that we've talked about uh, one that, 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 quick, that soon comes to mind when we talk about this sort of thing is there was a professor in a Japanese university, possibly Tokyo University, did a study a while ago as to why so many Japanese people have hay fever and allergies. And he came to the conclusion, based on his scientific research, that it's because you know young people in Japan are growing up in these sterile environments and it's weakening their immune systems. And because that was released and then it just sort of fades away. And a lot of this stuff is like that, you know. Another one that's really been in the news recently has, has been all the talk about, about Japan trying to improve their English levels. And, you know, they, they recognise, the government recognises that if Japan's going to connect with the world as far as doing business or politics or, you know, in any way dealing with anybody outside Japan, really the... The obvious solution is that they're going to need a lot more people who can speak another language, and in particular, in particular, English, as it's one of the one of the world's one of the world's main languages for, for international communication. So there's there's been a lot of talk about that, but then, then nothing happens. You know, we see it in the we see stuff like this all the time. So you see the the language thing, you see it in the in the media, and you see politicians talking about it and then you'll see panels of people on TV talking about it and 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 they talk about it and they talk about it and, oh yes yes it's important and we need we need to improve our English and you know occasionally someone's brave enough to mention that you know Japan's 28th out of the developed countries who use English as a second language Japan's English level skill level is, is 28th below South Korea and half of Asia and all of Europe and you know, so they, they talk about it, they talk about it and they sort of recognise that they need to do something about it and then they don't do anything. Or well, they'll do, they'll take some sort of minor steps that really don't change anything. You know, one of the things the government talked about recently was making it compulsory that everybody has to do a, an English proficiency test before entering university, which testing, and we've talked about this in a previous video too, testing doesn't result in a better education, it just results in more testing and all the testing would, would show would be how bad everybody's English level is. Almost everybody, not everybody, almost everybody. So, you know, we see this all the time, so we get a bit, it's easy to get, when you live here, it's easy to get a bit sort of sceptical about these things when they, 
when they come up in the press, you know, and you hear about them talking. Same as with the Olympics, you know, they talk about the, the 2020 Olympics, and there's all these big goals and these, these big aspirations that they have to get ready for the 2020 Olympics. And, you know, when you've lived here a while, you tend to get a bit pes a bit skeptical about it all because you know that they tend to talk about it and then not do anything. And the reason for that is that there's this, there's a whole heap of reasons for it. One of them, one of the reasons is that this government, this country, this society is still very much a feudal style society. So even though it's a democracy, you know, in a lot of a lot of a lot of countries, the decision or the the actions often come from below and and you know motivate the people at the top to do things about you know take actions and, and, and change things. Whereas Japanese society has always been. You know, that feudal style society where the, the Lord tells his, you know, his, his right hand men, always men, to, to go and, and, and bring in, you know, do something. Here's the new rule. And then it goes all the way down through society to the people at the bottom and everybody does it. And no one questions it. And if you do question it, you get your head cut off. And that's the way Japan traditionally was. And it's sort of still like that, really, is that. And you see this all the time when we've talked about this on previous videos as well, that, you know, in business and in, in, in government and in bureaucracy and things like that, you see things all the time where people are doing really, really stupid, pointless things that are a total waste of time and, and nobody tells anybody. You know, we see it all the time. We see it in the bank, we see it in the city hall, we see it in companies where people are doing really stupid things, you know. That report, what are you doing there? I do this report every month about what I've done in the previous month. How long does it take? It takes two days. Okay, and then what do you do? I give it to my boss. Okay, does your boss read it? No, because he, he gets them from all the staff and he just puts it in a file. It's all, all done on pieces of paper and you put it in a file. So really it's a waste of time, yes. And so when you live here you see this sort of stuff all the time we've talked about this on so many previous videos that when you and when you're in a group of people here and doing something you know everybody's doing something there was an example a while ago a long time ago maybe six seven years ago mentioned it in the video we were at a kudo kudo range so um doing the kudo you know the japanese archery and we're rebuilding the azuchi which is the which is the embankment behind the targets that stops the arrows, basically. And they're all shifting the, the dirt with, with Hessian bags. So we were, we were shoveling the dirt into these Hessian bags and then carrying it quite a long way to where this Azuchi was and then emptying the bags out and then going back and filling the next bag. And so it was really hard work and it was really labor intensive and really silly and where this dojo was this kudo dojo was was very close to uh government a, a council city hall city council uh store room sort of thing storehouse sort of thing that had was full of tools including a couple of wheelbarrows and it was a weekend and the guys were there the council guys were there and no doubt if we'd said to them do you mind if we use a couple of those wheelbarrows no doubt they would say yes because the the cute old dojo was actually on city property and it's part of the city property so you know it's all part of the same thing so i actually said to the guy above me now because again here's the hierarchy exists it's not just in dojo everybody has people above them and below them and this is the way japanese society works and this senior guy to me it was like a fourth darn kudo guy and i said young guy and i said to him look there's two wheelbarrows over there if we go and get those two wheelbarrows you and i can move all this dirt down there in about 30 minutes whereas the way we were doing it with these hessian bags and people carrying these hessian bags and we we're going to be there all day and, and he went mm, 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 and then never said another word and it's because in a lot of countries a lot of a lot of societies that if you if, we, if people are doing something and you see a better way of doing it and you say how about we do this you know and people go oh brilliant brilliant hey listen to this listen to what the young guy suggested isn't this a brilliant idea let's do that that's brilliant and and they go for the better way whereas the way it's seen here nobody wants to do that because if if it's always been done that way now every year they rebuilt the, the azuchi by carrying the hessian bags of dirt over and putting them in a pile and that's the way it's always been done. And the way they see it is if you 
suggest another way of doing it, your attitude is that you are smarter than all the other people in that group and all the other people that have been in that group for a hundred years before. Because for a hundred years, everybody's always done that same thing with their shin bags. They've always done that. And now you're coming along saying that you think you know a better way. And I've actually had, I have actually had a family, Japanese family member in Japan snap at me once because I made a suggestion and the, this Japanese family member snapped and said to me, you always think, you always, no, no, you, you think you're smarter than everybody else, do you? Because I'd said something about I wanted to do something a bit differently. You think you're smarter than everybody else, do you? And that's the way they see it. And, and so in a small microcosm in your Japanese family, that's the way they do it. In a small group, like a martial arts group or a school group or a city hall group or whatever, that's the way they see it. And then on a national level, that's the way they see it. So, so saying to the group that you think you've got a better way of doing it, and this is what happened with this group of young bureaucrats, is some people reacted really badly to it, is that is that oh, what, what do you think you know you think you know a better way do you you think you know better than everybody else and 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 it goes against the whole flow too because the flow here goes from the top the people at the top who are usually old men down to everybody at the bottom and so if someone anywhere lower tries to tell the people above or tries to tell everybody that they've got a better got a better way that they're going against the flow and that, that just doesn't work right so there's huge resistance to it. And you get this all the time. And people that are in your life here, whether it be family or friends or whatever, people that are work associates, business associates, people that you deal with all the time, that you think are sort of modern thinking, switched on people, will still react in this way to any sort of change or suggestion to change or new idea or anything else. And we get it all the time. We get it with our English friendly directory. You know, we'll contact English friendly companies in Japan and say, you know, we think what you're doing there is really good and we like to tell everybody about it. And when we do that to a company that's owned by expats, by foreigners, by, you know, an American or an Australian or an English person or German person or something, usually they come out and go, oh, that's a great idea. Yeah, we haven't heard about that before. That's a great idea. Please do that. You know, please tell all your YouTube people about us. That'd be great. And that's usually how they react to the new idea. It's, to them, it's a new idea, right? They haven't heard of it before. But to the Japanese business owners and managers and people that we contact, they go, oh, often they'll send back an email and say, oh, we haven't done that before. And then you'll never hear from them again. Because that's, that's the, it's just so ingrained. I mean, those of you who have watched a lot of our videos would have heard all this before. Because we've got a million examples of this where it happens every day, every day in some way. There'll be something that everybody does, and everybody does it, and the reason that everybody does it is that everybody does it. And that's it, There's, that's the reason. And that if, if you think you know better, and you think you're gonna tell anybody differently or anything else, it just goes against the grain. So the whole system's down from the top like that, and then any sort of any sort of rocking the boat is seen as like, there's a million ways of saying this in Japanese, but, but you know, making ripples in the pond, or you know, making waves, as we'd say in English, or, you know, any sort of upsetting the apple cart, as we'd say in English, you know, any sort of, any sort of suggestion that people do anything differently from the way they already do it, is just seen as, as upsetting the harmony, and, and there's a real resistance to it, you know, and you get used to this, when you live here, you get used to it in your family, and in your friends, and in everybody neighbors everybody around you you know they have their way of doing stuff and if you come up with a suggestion of doing it differently and that's what these young bureaucrats will come up against you know and you can be guaranteed one of the people above them one person one person above those guys actually said that he admired their courage in, in being honest about what they'd found and, and saying honestly what they'd found right one of the people above them said that and that was it that's about the only support they got from above. And, and even then, we know what that means. He's just saying that. He's saying that because that's a cool thing to say. And, oh, yes, that's wonderful that you guys have said that. And we get that here all the time too. It's the same as with the, with the suggestion about, the, about the, the wheelbarrows. You know, that guy was like, oh, yeah, mm, yes, mm, nodding, nodding like, oh, yes, interesting idea. 
and then nothing gets, he, 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 there's no way in the world. And at that stage, I'd only been here a short period of time, I really didn't get it. But it was a hint. It was a real hint. It was, it was a real, I went home thinking about that that day and it was a real lesson. It was like, yeah, that's interesting, isn't it? That even if there is a better way and you suggest a better way, that's as far as it'll go. And again, he would have been thinking, oh yeah, the, the, you know, we've got another, there's another aspect when you're a foreigner in Japan. If you're a Japanese person in Japan and you suggest a way that you think's a better way, you're likely to get those sort of reactions that, oh, you know, you think you know better than everybody else. But if you're a foreigner in Japan, it's even worse. Because, oh yeah, here's the foreigner thinking he knows the better way. You know, he, he thinks he knows a better way. We've been doing it this way for a hundred years and the foreigner comes along and thinks he knows a better way and then you get a real different reaction to that often. And it's not, it's not, and again, those people don't want to upset the harmony either. So usually it's a real subtle, you know, oh really, hmm, 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 you know, hmm, hmm, hmm. Same group of, of, of uh, Kudo people. We were at a big dojo in a city once, big multi-story city dojo, it was huge and, and We'd come in a really long route to get to where we needed to be. And while we were there, I, I went outside at one stage and realized that from where our car was to where we were actually inside was actually quite close if we went out through this side door. And the side door was a, a door that, was, that went out to where there was a smoking area. And you could go out through that door, through the smoking area, and you'd be where our car was. And if you went the way that we'd walked in, you had to walk this big long route all the way around the building. And the same group of people, we came to leave at the end of the day, and I said to one of the people I was with, you know, if we go through this door here, we can go straight to the car, it's just there, we can just about see it. And the same reaction as, as with, the, with the wheelbarrow suggestion, it was like, oh, uh, and that was the end of it. That person didn't tell the person, you know, the, the, the person that was leading the group out in this big long route, because, you know, no, no, well, we just, we always go this way, so we'll just go this way. You know, and, and when you when you live here, when you live here for a while, you get used to this, and you and you soon realise that it's just better just to just go with the flow. You know, just go with the flow, and so everybody does that. And because occasionally we get someone telling us, you know, there was, I can't remember what the topic was. We made a video recently about about some sort of controversial topic, and and there was somebody t saying you need to stand up. Oh, it might have been the discrimination. We made one about how foreigners in Japan get discriminated against quite often, you know, with renting apartments or with work or with all sorts of things. There's, there's discrimination against foreigners in Japan, it, there just is. And and we sort of said, you just gotta accept that that's what happens and the only thing you can really do about it is to vote, is to, is to vote with your money. So in other words, if, if some company discriminates against you, well, don't spend your money there anymore, you know, some bank treats you badly or whatever, then, you know, do business with someone else. And um, someone got really upset and said, you need to protest and you need to change it. And you need to do something about changing it. And we, we often get people with comments like that on our videos. You know, you should do something about it. And, that, you know, suggesting that the foreigners in Japan should protest and change things in Japan. And it's just, it's just not going to happen. You know, it's just not going to happen, and, and we see this all the time. And and then people say, "Oh, you're you're, you're giving up. You're defeatist. You're you're not even trying to do anything about it." No, we're realistic. We're realistic, and the, and the the fact is that you know the Japanese people can't change things in Japan, so you know foreign people have no chance. So whenever you know with this topic, with this with these this research by these young bureaucrats, or with with you know the, the research from the Tokyo University professor with you know about the the allergies and things and with a lot of these things that we see that they come to these conclusions and the government will acknowledge them the government will say look we know we need to improve the English level for for, for Japanese people we know we need to do something about it because it's not working at the moment now English levels are really low and if we're going to connect with the rest of the world we really need to improve all our English levels and they know they acknowledge it all but then they, they there's this huge inertia that stops them actually doing anything about it and and they'll do these little token things and you get this all the time too from companies and from governments where they'll do a little token effort you know some little token effort to sort of 
like in that direction, you know, like, like oh, well, okay, we're improving the show, well, okay, so we'll do, we'll do some more testing before people enter university, we'll give them an English test, well, that's not going to improve their level, is it? That's just going to show us how bad their English actually is, and that's the sort of thing we deal with here all the time, so, as a heads up video, obviously, if you're going to come live in Japan, you just have to accept this, that things here change really slowly, the upside of that is, that's one of the reasons that it's such a wonderful place to live is that the things here do change very slowly and that's why there's, there's a lot of traditions here that are still strong and that makes it a wonderful place to live there's that there's that aspect to it but on the other other side of the coin you just have to accept you know my answer to the guy the patron that sent us that story was was you know the, that that those things that those young bureaucrats reported on might get acted on in the next hundred years and that's not an exaggeration because you've got to look at how many generations it's going to take for anything to change. You know, at the moment, the, the country and the, the businesses and the company and everything here is run by old men. You know, and there's a few ladies that have power here that run businesses or that are in government or whatever, but it's a, they're still a real small minority. And that the, the old men here have the power and, and they want to keep it that way. They like it that way. They're not going to change it. And then the whole society is sort of comfortable with that. You know, everybody's sort of comfortable with that. You don't get a lot of people protesting in the street here or, because they don't want to make waves either. Most of the people here are just happy with the way things are. And they don't feel that they need to change anything. They, they like it the way it is. And that the old men are running the show and they're happy with that. And you know, the, the old guys running the company and they're happy with that and they just go along with it. They don't necessarily want it to change and that's, that's why it's not changing. I mean, if, if the majority of Japanese people wanted to change all these things, they'd be out on the street protesting and the things would change, wouldn't they? But but they, they like it. They're, they're happy. They've got, you know, they've got a nice house to live in and they've got they've got comfortable lives and they like the way things are. And, and it's just a natural thing here. You'll find this, you'll find this with your friends and family and co-workers and you know, other students that you might study with here or whatever. You'll find everybody, everybody's most people here are the same. They don't sit around talking about what things should be changed or improved or what they'd like to see different or or how things could be better or anything. Complaining about the way things are. None of that. Because no one wants to make waves or ripples or they just want to maintain the harmony. So the conversations are usually about really non-confrontational, non-challenging sort of stuff. And TV's the same. TV, most Japanese TV's just fluff. You know, a lot of our countries, a lot of our other societies, you know, TVs, there's a lot of sort of, um, what do you call it, investigative journalism and sort of critical sort of thinking and critical looking at things, you know, and a lot of that goes on in a lot of countries on television and that sort of gets a conversation going amongst the people, you know, or it's a result of the conversation going on amongst the people, whereas we don't see that here. You know, most television here is fluff. It's just fluff and silly game shows and nonsense and they just avoid confrontational topics. If they do talk about some sort of important topic, usually they just all sit around and agree with each other because no one wants to disagree with anybody, see? And then, even then, you've still got the old guy who's sitting there who's the expert and everybody goes, oh, sawdust car, you know? So, it's just the way it is. <laughs> and it's not going to change. And our time's up for this video. <laughs> so, anyway, that's the answer. Anybody says, you know, do you think that'll change? What do you think will happen with that? This video is this, the answer to that. No, it's not going to change. Or if it does change, it'll take a long time. Anyway, there it was. More videos. Coming soon.